Welcome to the lab that I've been working in over the summer. I was fortunate enough to receive funding from the Alzheimer's Society to do a summer project looking at the proteins involved in Alzheimer's disease. I'm sure many of you have seen labs in science shows or on the news, but have you ever wondered what actually goes on behind the scenes? I am studying biology at the University of Sussex, but I'm currently working in the Serpil lab until the end of December. The lab looks at many different aspects of Alzheimer's disease, such as the structure of the proteins involved and how these different proteins can influence each other. Well, in Alzheimer's disease, um, people suffer because their, um, their brains accumulate amyloid plaques. And so um, one of the things that we've done in my lab is to try and understand the structure of those proteins that form those amyloid plaques. So I would say one of the greatest accomplishments accomplishments would be that we have um, understood the structure of these amyloid fibrils that make up the amyloid plaques. And more recently what we're trying to do is to understand how those amyloid plaques or those smaller um, structures might cause toxicity that leads to degeneration of the brain tissue. And what we believe is that um, there's a particular protein that uh, accumulates, it self-assembles and forms these fibres that accumulate in the brain tissue and it forms things called amyloid plaques, which is something that is often talked about in the news. Um, and what we're trying to do is to understand the nature of those structures that form, why they form and why they form in people with Alzheimer's disease and they don't form in the rest of us. Well, at the moment we're really at the level of trying to understand what causes the disease and I think in order to generate new drugs that will be able to either prevent or combat Alzheimer's disease, it's really important that we understand the fundamental nature of what's actually what the mechanism that causes Alzheimer's disease is. And so our role, I think, is to understand the cause whilst then other people, um, drug discovery people, will then use that. Um, understanding to be able to develop drugs that may help us to prevent people from getting Alzheimer's disease in the first place. So why do people get Alzheimer's disease? There are many reasons people get Alzheimer's. These include age, genetic, environmental and non-environmental factors. Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia globally and there are said to be 496,000 people in the UK currently suffering the disease. Dementia is not a disease on its own but it's characterised by a group of symptoms. These include loss of cognitive ability and memory, as well as difficulties with reasoning and communication. What we work on in the lab is the disease mechanism and its progression. To explain how this works requires a short lesson on cells, DNA and protein. The three main areas of the cell we look at are the nucleus, which contains all of the DNA, the cytoplasm, that contains all the cellular structures and the fluid in between, and the membrane, which acts as a barrier between the inside and outside of the cell. DNA is condensed into the nucleus of the cells and is packaged into chromatin, which makes up the chromosomes. Here, chromatin is split into two main types, heterochromatin, which is the inactive and rarely used part of the DNA, and euchromatin, which is the active part of the DNA that is constantly being expressed by the cell. The DNA code allows all cells to be different, since all cells contain the same DNA. The differences in euchromatin and heterochromatin allow the cell to produce different proteins that lead to the different functions that each cell perform. Brain cells, which include neurons, send important messages to each other via synapses and these are the ones that are affected in Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's is characterised by a loss of neurons and a build-up of amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles, which over time get worse and worse, leading to more areas of the brain becoming damaged. So what are amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles? Well, amyloid plaques are an accumulation of the protein amyloid beta. The reason for the formation of these plaques is largely unknown, but it's believed to be due to the ratio of the different lengths of amyloid beta protein. Amyloid plaques accumulate outside the neurons, and we aren't completely sure how these affect the integrity of the neurons, but it is something we are currently looking at in the lab. Neurofibrillary tangles are found inside the neurons. The tangles consist of a protein called tau. This protein is usually involved in maintaining the integrity of microtubules, which help define cell shape and are involved in the transport of organelles throughout the cell. The reason the tangles form is due to changes in the tau protein, thus leading to microtubule collapse and problems with the integrity of the neurons. My project has been looking at the interaction between these two proteins, A beta and tau, through various different techniques. I'm currently looking to see whether the addition of A-beta to cells can cause DNA damage. 
Understanding this would help explain how neurons and other brain cells are destroyed in Alzheimer's disease. There are many other projects running in the lab, and one PhD student told me about his. I'm a PhD student in my first year in the Cypher Laboratory, and um, I work on cellular and molecular mechanisms towards understanding Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's is kind of a very complex disease in, in, in such a way that there are different aspects of research currently ongoing in the field of research. I particularly work on the cellular and molecular mechanisms towards understanding the interaction between A beta and tau. And I'm sure even a non-scientist would have heard about amyloid beta, which is principally believed to be the trigger of the disease or contributor of the disease, and tau, which is also a major player in disease. And what I do in the lab is try to see where these two different proteins meet and how they can impact on the cells leading to neurodegeneration that happens in Alzheimer's disease, specifically kind of how they impact on the integrity of the DNA and other nuclear events such as epigenetic changes. I think we found lots of interesting results so far um, because we, we have found that A beta could impact on tau phosphorylation and uh, we have found that A beta could also impact on the integrity of the cells, particularly at the nuclear level. And so far this is something really interesting. And I'm sure within the next two years of my PhD and at the completion of my PhD, we would have found something exciting that could be applied at the therapeutic level. We were also visited by a member of the Alzheimer's Society Research Network for a checkup on the lab. I'm a lay monitor for the Alzheimer's Research Network. Um, I've been doing that for the last four or five years. Um, I've been monitoring projects for the last couple of years. Um, you can go all over the country um, if you want to, doing these monitoring projects. Yes, it means that I'm not a scientist, I'm not a chemist, I'm, I'm um, a normal member of the public, really. Um, it was because of my husband, um, who's actually got a frontal temporal lobe dementia, that I became interested in dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, and became uh, a carer, looking after people, in individuals who had dementia and had particularly behavioural problems that were hard to cope with in the home. Uh, and then I just became more interested in, in knowing more about the disease and what causes it and the processes of the disease. It depends on your situation and how you want to become involved. Uh, being a, a part of the research network uh, means that it's not such a, a hands-on working with people with dementia, but you could ease, just as easily belong to a local group um, helping in practical ways, looking after people, being a dementia champion, spreading the word about dementia, trying to help mm, towns and villages become dementia friendly. Dementia friendly is, is what the, the government and the Alzheimer's Society are aiming to make the whole of England into a, a dementia friendly place because there are so many people who are going to get dementia. Um, it would be nice to think that if you are out with your relative in a supermarket or a shop that people would be able to help you and know what it was that they could do to help you 
if you got into difficulties in some way. The media is constantly bombarding us with new drugs or miracle workouts that can prevent this disease. Yet what science shows us through various studies is that keeping active both mentally and physically, as well as eating healthily, can drastically cut down the risks. I sincerely hope that we can meet the G8's target of tackling dementia by 2025 and put an end to the suffering seen by many. Thank you for watching. If you want to find out any more about Alzheimer's disease, then there is loads of information on the Alzheimer's Society website.